Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom Mason here, back with another video. And for those of you who aren't subscribed to the channel, um, my name's Tom Mason, I'm a professional wildlife and nature photographer. Um, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking you through what's in my kit bag uh, for a safari shoot out in Africa. Now, for you guys who have followed the channel before, who know my videos, you'll know that last year I was out in the Amazon rainforest. If you haven't seen those videos, you can check them out here somewhere. Um, but this year I was really lucky and got an invite to come out uh, to Botswana and to hang out with the guys at Pangolin Photo Safaris. Um, we're going to be in the Chobe National Park on the river and in the uh, safari jeeps to go looking for some incredible wildlife and for me it's super exciting because it's the first time I've ever been to Africa on a safari and I'm really looking forward to the challenge of trying to create some pictures that might be a little bit different. You know I've done all my research, I've looked through thousands of safari pictures and hopefully when we come back from the next three weeks I'll have a portfolio of images that are my take on kind of the African environment. But today what I'm going to be doing is walk you through where I'm going to be staying over the next couple of weeks, uh, showing you what is here because this place is just set up awesome uh, for photographers. But also we're going to be looking at what's in my camera bag because it's a question I get asked all the time and as I'm heading out on safari I've got a few select bits of kit um, and I'm going to be talking you through uh, why I've got them, what I've got them, and how I'm going to be using them to get the images that I'm after. So uh, let's get cracking. Right, so I picked up my key, but why is Pangolin a specialist place for photographers? Well, it's because of the way it's set up. Um, the vehicles they have here are specially designed with photographers in mind. You've got gimbals on the boats that we'll talk about in a future video, as well as a Jeep that's specially kind of rigged for photographers, but also the whole kind of idea behind the place. If you actually don't have a camera to be out taking pictures on safari, the guys here will actually lend you one for your stay. And every time you go out, you'll have one of their photo hosts um, being behind there to give you some ideas, tips, and inspiration for your shooting. And these guys, um, you know, they're, they're really skilled photographers and their images are up on the walls behind me. And they'll be there to guide you with techniques, ideas, and, and ways to make the most of your trip out to Africa. Because, you know, if you're on a standard safari where you might be in with other people, um, you know, people who just want to see the big five and get on. You're not going to get the same photographic safari experiences you will here, where you've got the chance to settle in at sightings for a longer period of time, where you're going to be with other people focused on photography, meaning you're going to have a much better opportunity to get the images you're after. And that's something I'm really interested in, because for me, this trip's not only about getting out and making some pictures, showcasing you what's here, but also as a long-term idea that I might be bringing some of you back here. So if you're interested, make sure to um, like subscribe to the channel and keep updated with any new information because maybe you'll join me here in the future. But firstly, let's take a bit more of a look around. Right, so let's take you on a quick tour of the lodge. And firstly, the bar. It has an absolutely awesome view over the Chobe National Park and River. So I'll just show you that, like, look at that. It's absolutely awesome out there. Uh, we also have a watering hole down the bottom where we've already seen elephants, kudu, and other stuff come in. Uh, that's really quite nice. You've got the bar area here. Um, huge pangolin, of course. Um, and one thing you'll notice about the bar that's really, really nice is it's free because the whole place is all-inclusive. That's great. Nice lounge area behind me. And then let's run downstairs. So as we're downstairs is where my room is, but also we'll just check out one of the nice features as well is the fact that, you know, as you walk around, you're surrounded by so many massive photographs to give you a load of inspiration. You know, you've got leopards and elephants on the wall, um, but also you've got pictures from Antarctica and other places that the photo hosts um, have been to on their travels. You know, the photo hosts who are here, who look after you and your stay are all very talented photographers. It's fantastic because they're teaching you whilst you're out in the field in somewhere that not only they know and they love, but also where they've shot um, for many years before. And in here, oh, the editing room is somewhere that is really quite cool. You know, we go inside here, it's probably be a bit echoey, but you'll see the space where you can come in, dial in, you've got plug points that are UK, US, uh, to give you all the power you need. So you can sit in here with your laptop, edit those shots that you've been working on the day, and make sure that you're getting the pictures that you want whilst you're on safari. Oh, right, back outside. And now, let's go to my room. I am F1.4, because, you know, gotta have that wide open aperture.
Right, so this is home, you know, sun's setting, absolutely gorgeous, but let's run through what's in my bag, because I know it's a question I get all the time. Um, so this bag is packed exactly how I was when I was traveling. Um, this is the Whistler 450AW Mark II. Um, got sent the new version, um, pretty much the same as the last version with a couple of little tweaks that's quite nice. Used this, you know, overhead luggage as I was traveling. Worked absolutely flawlessly. Just looks like a really nice standard rucksack that's perfect when you're traveling. You don't want something that says too much camera bag. That's quite nice. Um, and let's just open it up and show you what's inside. So there's a really nice main compartment, you know, front compartment where I keep my kind of personal gear. When I'm traveling, the first thing is my headphones. Um, you know, if you're on a long haul flight, these are the absolute best. These are the Bose Quiet Comforts. You know, if you watch any other video, you'll know these are great. The noise cancelling is incredible. I've got my cool new um, mini jitsu. This is the uh, little mini traveler, really nice little remote camera, something like that. So that's in the bag. Super lightweight, um, but supports up to like five kilos with a head. Um, that's really nice for some of the bigger cameras. So that's there. One thing you can't rely on is the fact that your bags are going to get somewhere. So I always throw in an extra t shirt and a pair of like um, merino wool boxes. They're going to last a good few days until your stuff arrives. Um, it's just handy, you know, you get somewhere you can freshen up without the worry of everything turning up. That's great. So that's there. Um, and that's pretty much it for the front section when I'm traveling. I like to try and keep it as compact as possible uh, so you can throw it in that overhead bin. Now up on the top, um, nice upside um, compartment, easy access. And then here is where I keep a lot of my digital stuff when I'm traveling. Uh, you'll see that I've got my laptop charger in there. Um, I have my dongle because, you know, USB-C, you need those adapter life. Um, I've got my XQD card reader in there as well. I have two hard drives. Uh, these are the ATCs from GTEC, both uh, kind of like solid polycarbonate. Two are in here on the way out, but on the way back, one goes in my whole luggage, one goes in here. You split up your data to keep everything safe, uh, so that's there. And of course, I have my laptop. Uh, this is a 12-inch MacBook, not a MacBook Pro, really lightweight, small, easy uh, to take with me. And that's one of the nice things about the updated version of the Whistler, is the fact that the laptop compartment is in the middle of the bag. It's not the front, it's not the back, doesn't press on your back but also it can't get damaged when you lay it down. You know, it keeps it nice and secure, uh, really, really good. So that's in there. In the top, I also have a head torch that's always in there. And the first thing that I pick up on pretty much any assignment are my binoculars. These are the Nikon Monarch HGs, uh, the 8x30s. They're just fantastic. The quality's great, the optics are brilliant. Um, you know, they've got the same kind of technology that's used in the Nikon lenses with the ED glass. So very minimal chromatic aberration. Um, the field of view is fantastic. And the, uh, the transmission of light in these is so, so good. You, know, you look through them at dusk and you can just still see and it's kind of incredible. So uh, these are always one of the things that are on me pretty much all the time, you know, just absolutely love them, so that's great. Um, some batteries in the top, but batteries are boring, you know what they look like, so we'll get past that. In the back, um, you know, again, the low pro opens from the back, so when you're traveling, it makes life easier, a little bit safer. They've updated the harness, um, it wraps around a little bit better, it's a bit more comfortable, but I quite like. Um, but again, still opens from the back, and here is the good stuff. Um, I've got three cameras with me, but one, is right there recording me, the Nikon Z6. Um, but the main camera that I'm shooting uh, whilst I'm out on Safari is this, uh, the Nikon D850. Probably one of the best uh, cameras available on the market right now for wildlife photography. The quality of the sensor is just immaculate. Um, and you pair it with something like the 300 2.8 and it is just amazing uh, for wildlife photography. Um, I've had this lens for a good number of years, like seven years now, I have no complaints. It's still the first thing I put in my bag on any like overseas trip because it's just a workhorse. And with the D850 on the back, it is incredible. I've updated my 850 with the addition of the D5 batteries. Um, these give additional uh, frames a second, so I can now get nine frames a second instead of the standard seven. And also they improve the battery life and you get like 4,000 shots from them. That's absolutely great. <sighs> 
The second camera that I've got on this trip is the Nikon D5. Um, borrow this from Nikon UK. Thanks guys for the loan. Um, just testing it out to see how it fits in my workflow. The low light performance and stuff like that is gonna be really handy on this trip, um, especially to kind of eke out those extra kind of 10 minutes as the sun goes down. Um, that's really handy. Speed as well, you know, if we get like some cheetah chasing things and things like that, the speed of this is gonna be really nice. Um, so that's there. You know, when you're traveling, you always want at least two cameras. If something breaks, something goes wrong, you always want to have the backup. So I've got that there. Um, in here, I've got my chargers. Always carry the chargers in the bag. Um, the cables are in the front, but you don't need to see those. Um, and then we have a flash cable that goes with my flash. Nice to get it off camera. The next lens I've got is the 70 to 200. Uh, this is the new FLE version, borrowing this again from Nikon. Um, Want to test it compared to my own 70 to 200 and see how it performs, but mostly I'm interested in how it works on the Z6 um, in terms of the autofocus in video. Um, I'm really hoping that it's gonna be quite good, um, you know, because you know, also it has a better reproduction ratio than the older 70 to 200. Uh, so really looking forward to trying this out in the field. Really nice kind of environmental portrait lens. One lens that isn't in my bag on this trip is the 24-70 2.8. I have the 24-70 f4 for Z mount, um, but instead of that for the uh, F mount, I've actually brought along the Nikon 1.4, uh, the 35mm 1.4. You know, when I look through my Lightroom catalog, so many of my 24 to 70 images were shot at 35. Um, so this is smaller, lighter, and it gives me that bright 1.4 aperture that's gonna be incredible. You know, I've had this for a little while now, and the quality of this lens is absolutely immaculate. The way it renders backgrounds is so lovely. It's just so, so nice. So that is in the kit bag for this trip. The next things I have in here are my teleconverters, I've got the 1.4 and the two times, mainly used with the 300 2.8 because I find on primes they work the best. Um, just give me some you know, extra reach if I need it. I'll probably use the 1.4 the most. The two times will be for very select instances, but I'll do a video on teleconverters in the future to talk more about that. Um, also, what else have we got? We got the FTZ adapter for the Z mount so I can use any of my other Nikon lenses on the Z6. And then my final lens is the 20mm 1.8. You guys know about this, talked about this before. Close focus is amazing, sharpness incredible. 1.8 aperture means that in low light you can still get great image quality, um, really, really nice. I've got a spare D5 battery here that's perfect for, you know, um, you always gotta have a backup and you know, with 4,000 pictures on this, um, when we go to the Delta, we're probably not gonna be able to charge for a day or so, so that's gonna give me all the power I need. My flash gun of choice is the Nikon. SB700, um, this thing's great, had it for a few years, it's absolutely battered, but works really well. It's small, it's tiny, but when I use uh, flash, I'm mostly using the wide angle, so I don't need to like, throw light absolutely miles, and this is easily powerful enough for what I do. Of course, got my rocket blower, handy for getting the dust off and everything like that, so that is in the kit, and that is pretty much all that's in the bag, you know, keeping it reasonably um, small and lightweight, you know, I'm working from a vehicle, you can't move too much, but that is there. Um, I do have a camera trap set up with me as well, but we'll talk about that in another video. But before I go today, the two final items that I brought with me, one is this. This is a Jitsos monopod. Um, basically got this not for like stabilizing a lens on top of it, but actually for flipping over and extending stuff and get it off the side of a vehicle and get a low angle on my subject, hoping there's gonna be some opportunities to use that. Uh, so that's there. And finally, my down jacket. Seems a bit ridiculous, because I'm out in Africa. You think to yourself, Tom, it's gonna be pretty warm. Um, but in the mornings, it's gonna be absolutely freezing. So this is gonna keep me warm and toasty when we go on those early morning game drives. So that is perfect, and that is in the bag. And that is pretty much it for what I'm bringing on Safari. And that's the end of this video. So. You know, if you're looking forward to more content uh, from whilst I'm out on Safari, to talk behind the scenes of how I'm shooting and getting images, be sure to like and subscribe for future videos. If you want to see more wildlife content from the UK and everything like that, there's going to be quite a few videos when I get back as well, um, as well as kind of gear chatting in regards to helping you set up and get the gear that's going to help you uh, make your own wildlife photographs. But you know, that's it for today. Join me again soon for more videos. And you know, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. But until then, I'll uh, see you in the next one.